We all know Warren Buffett is the greatest investor of all time and one of the world's richest people, but he wasn't born wealthy. But how did he arrive? His life and work are divided into two eras. If he made his money in the same way that one produces a giant snowball, the first phase would be like forming the core of the snowball, and the second period would be like rolling the snowball and developing it by rolling. Warren Buffett was born on August 30, 1930 in Omaha, Nebraska. With a net worth of more than $100 billion as of April 2021, he is regarded as one of the world's most successful investors. At the age of 24, one of his first jobs was at Benjamin Graham's Investment Partnership, where he earned $12,000 per year. Graham was a Columbia Business School professor who taught Buffett. Graham retired and closed his business in 1956, and Warren established Buffett Partnership Limited, primarily a wealth management firm. Unlike most wealth management firms today, which charges between 1% and 2% AUM, assets under management, Warren charged 0% AUM, but kept 25% of any commissions earned above a 6% cumulative return. The firm's average return from 1957 to 1968 was 31.6%, with no negative years. His method, as taught to him by Benjamin Graham, was to buy a small portfolio of on-sale stocks. Benjamin Graham recommended buying between 10 and 30 stocks, while Warren Buffett recommended owning even fewer. The truth about identifying amazing companies is to evaluate a stock's sticker price, intrinsic value, and purchase it for 50% off. With a 50% margin of safety, it's essentially the same as getting 10 banknotes for $5. Warren Buffett Trades Portfolio knew from a young age that he wanted money for several reasons. It could make him independent, he could do whatever he wanted with his life, and he could work for himself doing what he wanted every day. When he was six years old, he began selling chewing gum. He'd go door to door in the neighborhood selling gum he'd gotten from his grandfather. This was the massive snowball's first snowflake. He sold Coca-Cola door to door and on beaches during family vacations from the age of six to nine. On golf courses, he sold used golf balls. He discovered them in the woods and ponds when he was nine to 10 years old and sold them to golfers until he was apprehended by a cop. He got a job selling peanuts and popcorn at University of Omaha football games when he was 10 years old. He walked through the stands yelling, peanuts, popcorn, five cents, a nickel, a half dime, a fifth of a quarter, get your peanuts and popcorn here. He discovered a book called 1,000 Ways to Make $1,000 in a Library when he was 11 years old. 1 million is 1,000 divided by 1,000. Opportunity Knox mentioned the book. Never before in American history has the time been more favorable for a man with little capital to start his own business than it is today. In 1936, the book was published. There are even more opportunities today, but you cannot succeed unless you begin. His intention was to buy a weighing machine. People were charged each time they weighed themselves on it. With the money he earned, he intended to buy more weighing machines. He had the ability to compound. Buffett declared at the age of 11 in 1941 that he would be a millionaire by the age of 35. His thoughts were constantly on business and selling. When he was 13, he had a crush on Dorothy. One day, he planned to take Dorothy to the movies. Because he was afraid, her father opened the door and tried to sell him a magazine subscription instead. When he was 13, he moved to Washington because his father was elected to Congress. He received a phone call from an adult acquaintance named Ed, who added, Warren, you are the only business person I know in Washington. Ed needed to get rid of 100 pounds of cornflakes and dog biscuits, so he directed his warehouse worker to deliver them to Buffett's house. Send me half of whatever you get for them, he said. Suddenly, his garage was overflowing with cornflakes and dog biscuits, which he sold for $100 and kept $50. He then began delivering newspapers on three different routes. He would get up at 4.30 a.m., distribute the newspapers until 8 a.m., and then go to school. He rushed home from school to pick up the evening newspaper. Meanwhile, he sold calendars to his newspaper subscribers. He'd also ask customers for previous issues of magazines so he could figure out when their subscriptions expired and sell them new ones. When he was 14, he filed his first tax return. His watch and bicycle were deducted as business expenses. When he was 14, he had more than $1,000. He had $2,000 when he was 15 because he was making so much money distributing newspapers. In order to save time and be more efficient, he meticulously examined the routes. 
he put his money into his father's hardware business and bought a 40-acre property for $1,200. He was pitching publications for $175 per month at the age of 16, which was more than his instructor's salary. He also sells golf balls and collectible stamps to collectors. When he was 17, he installed a pinball machine in a barber shop and split the profits with the barbers. He had $5,000 on him at the time. After reading the book 1,000 Ways to Make $1,000, Buffett immediately grasped the concept of compounding. He needed to earn more money and put it into investments. The earlier he invests, the better, because the money will have more time to grow. He was also an early stock market investor. When he was 10, he wanted to visit the New York Stock Exchange. His father accompanied him as a 10-year birthday present. When he was 12 years old, he bought his first stock. He was reading novels and barons from his father's library. His business experience proved extremely useful to him. He stated, I'm a better investor because I'm a better businessman. And I'm a better businessman because I'm a better investor. He went to Jayco at the age of 21, spoke with the company's president, Lorimer Davidson, for two hours, and then invested 75% of his money in this one stock. He then sold Jayco shares to buy Western Insurance, which had a profit per share of $29, but traded at $3. Then he bought Union Street Railway shares, which were supposed to yield $50 in dividends, but were trading at $35. He found out about it while attending shareholder meetings. His money was growing at a 60% annual rate. When he returned to Omaha, he set up his own fund. He initially only invested for family members, then borrowed money from Ben Graham's friends and previous clients. He was in charge of seven funds totaling more than $500,000 in assets. His pay for handling the funds was rolled into fund shares. He was delivering excellent results and collecting large sums of money. At the same time, his personal funds were growing through investment. This was the second stage of his snowball creation process, and he rolled it quickly and the snowball expanded at breakneck speed, and he became a millionaire at the age of 30. Furthermore, in 2010, Buffett stated that acquiring Berkshire Hathaway was the biggest investment mistake he had ever made, costing him nearly $200 billion in compounded investment returns over the next four to five years. Buffett claimed that if he had simply invested that money in insurance companies rather than Berkshire Hathaway, those investments would have paid off hundreds of times more. Berkshire Hathaway is currently diversified, but the key to building wealth is to buy businesses on the cheap in a focused portfolio. That's all we've got for you today. Let us know what you think in the comments section.